right, so I'm at the football game today to test um, some monitors. Not everyone has hundreds of dollars to spend on external monitors. And if you're a mirrorless camera user, you know how annoying those little LCD screens can be, especially outdoors because they're super tiny, and they're not very bright, and as a result, most of the time, you end up not even knowing if you're in focus or not. So today I'm going to discuss the pros and cons of a few external monitor options, starting with a free one. Give me all of your lies, cause you're my demon in disguise. I learned to love the kids you keep me in, but the walls keep closing in. And I don't want to die, but your poison feels so right. Why do I want you in your bed for me? My perfect storm, my beautiful catastrophe. Okay, so first off, let's take a look at a free app called Monitor Plus, which is basically a remote control for your Sony camera. Monitor Plus turns your phone or tablet into a professional camera monitor instantly, with key features like live view, of course, but also remote control of your shutter speed, your ISO, your frame rate, white balance, and many other settings. I mean, for zero dollars, this is amazing value, assuming, of course, that you already have a smartphone. The connection is through Wi-Fi, so there's no cable needed. The only issue with Wi-Fi, however, which is the same with any Wi-Fi connection, is that if you're surrounded by thousands of phones, the signal is not as good. So in a professional venue like this, my video signal tends to lag a little bit. But in a normal environment, not only does it not lag, but there's also no delay at all in your live view which is quite impressive because even monitors connected through HDMI sometimes can have a little bit of delay. Also, if you buy the Pro version for $30, you can unlock a bunch of other professional tools like Zebras, Waveforms, Focus Speaking, LUTs, and even Touch Autofocus, which is not even a thing on most external monitors on the market. And by the way, I do want to mention that I have used similar apps for Canon and Panasonic cameras in the past, but neither were nearly as good as this one, mainly because they both had a huge delay in live view. But in fairness, this was a long time ago, so they might be much better now. Anyway, let's move on to the FieldWorld F6 Plus, which is a budget monitor that I bought over a year ago and that I use all the time. It's a 5.5 inch 4K monitor with a touchscreen 1080p display. And it comes with all the professional monitoring tools appearing on your screen right now. I personally love this monitor for three main reasons. First of all, the image quality is great. Two, I can import my own LUTs. And three, you can use two types of batteries on this thing. You can either use a Canon LPE6 battery or a Sony NPF battery. Personally, I got rid of all my Canon batteries when I sold my cameras, but I have a bunch of NPF and the big ones last forever on this thing. Two big batteries like this is all I need to keep my monitor on all day. But there's a reason this monitor is so energy efficient, and that's because it is not very bright. It's only a 600 nits monitor, which is fine for indoors, but not so great when filming outdoors. To its defense, the FieldWorld F6 Plus actually comes with a little plastic hood included that does help when filming outdoors, but it's still not that great on a super bright sunny day. However, it does look a bit better in real life than what you're looking at right now, because filming a reflective surface in the sun presents its own challenges. Either way, 600 nits is not enough. And this is why I was super excited when FieldWorld reached out to me and sent me the FieldWorld LUT5 Field Monitor. This monitor is almost exactly the same as my F6 Plus in terms of image quality, size, and features, but with 3000 nits instead of 600. So clearly built for outdoor videography.
The difference between the two monitors, as you can see, is quite obvious. So if you're filming mainly outdoor sports during the day, I think that the LUT5 is a must. To give you a bit of perspective, smartphones tend to be between 300 and 400 nits, while a professional recording monitor like the Atomos Ninja 5 is 1000 nits of brightness. So with its 3000 nits and its 160 degrees viewing angle, the Feel World LUT5 is truly built for bright sunny days. The LUT5 only uses NPF batteries, however, and it does go through them quite fast. It also has an internal fan, which is kind of noisy. The fan is not an issue at all when filming sports, but it can be when filming interviews, for example. Another thing I like about the Field World LUT5 is the cold shoe mount that's included in the box, which is a big improvement from the bracket that comes with the F6 Plus. It's built better, it's sturdier, and it's much smaller, which I find really helpful when filming handheld on a mirrorless camera. So bottom line, my advice is this. If you don't have any money, just use your smartphone or a tablet, because that way at least you'll be able to monitor your focus and your image composition on a bigger screen, and it'll also give you easy access to a bunch of settings. But if you do have a bit of money, let's say 189 bucks, um, I would suggest getting the Feel World F6 Plus because that way you also have the ability to um, take your image quality to a certain level by controlling the exposure, making sure that it's always where it needs to be. Same thing for your colors. And if you have an extra 50 bucks, get the uh, LUT5, the Feel World LUT5 instead, because that one will give you the ability to film any sport anywhere at any time and that is the type of peace of mind that is worth way more than $50 in my opinion. With that being said, great video is completely useless without great audio. So if you think you can tolerate my voice for a few more minutes, you should watch the video appearing on your screen right now so I can help you complete your sports videography kit with the right wireless microphone.